Welcome to Hampstead Parish Church on this first Sunday after Easter, the second Sunday of the Easter season. So our service of Holy Communion from the Book of Common Prayer. We gather as a congregation in church and also uh, with those joining on Facebook Live on the in our online community, you are very welcome as we are joined together in the spiritual communion which God offers us by the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, <clears throat> and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Communion service in the Book of Common Prayer includes a collect for the Sovereign, as we pray for Her Majesty the Queen, so we remember with thanksgiving the life of His Royal Highness the Prince Philip. And we pray for all who grieve for the life of our nation and for all preparations as we remember and commend him to Almighty God. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our Queen and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she has, may faithfully serve, honour and humbly obey her in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth ever one God, world without end. Amen. Call it Epistle and Gospel of the first Sunday after Easter. Almighty Father, who hast given thine only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the fifth chapter of the first epistle of St. John, beginning at the fourth verse. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. If we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is greater. 
For this is the witness of God, which he had testified of his Son. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son hath not life. Here endeth the epistle. The Holy Gospel is written in the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John, beginning at the 20th verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosesoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosesoever sins ye retain, they are retained. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, we pray that by your Holy Spirit, your word would so dwell in us that we live to your glory, for your name's sake. Amen. From the epistle, the one that hath the Son hath life. From the gospel, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be unto you. From the creed, I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In these days of Easter tide, the great 50 days, where we remember and reflect on the presence of Christ on earth, raised to new life for 40 days until the ascension, 
and then the expectant waiting of the disciples for the next few days until the coming of the Spirit at Pentecost. In this Eastertide, in these great 50 days, we celebrate and, as it were, continue to bring into ourselves the glorious news that death has been conquered. We celebrate the hope that we look for. We don't look peering and wondering and hesitant, if you like, but we can look with the confidence, with faith, that because God has given God's only Son, as John puts it, that this is a record, that this is something in which we can place not just our hesitant wondering, but our hope. Because God has given his only son, Jesus Christ, to die and to be raised, we look towards the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In Eastertide, we draw to ourselves again and again and again the hope of glory. The presence of God in the world by the Holy Spirit. And the faith that the apostles taught and has been handed on for generations for the next 2,000 years. That they encountered the risen Christ in the upper room. That gradually for them the truth of resurrection dawned. That they were present as they saw Jesus drawn back to his Father, that they were present when the Spirit came. And from those who were locked in a room for fear of the Jews, they became those who were sent out, not just to Jerusalem, but to Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth to preach this good news. In this Easter tide, we celebrate that in the sun there is life. In this Eastertide, we celebrate Christ, who stands among us and says, Peace be with you. In this Eastertide, we celebrate the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, which in the risen Christ is present now. That does not take away from the reality of death in these days. It does not remove at an instant the brokenness of the world. It does not wipe out with one sweep of the hand the fact that our bodies continue to decay, that there is illness, indeed that there are still the effects of sin in the world. It does not therefore rule out the things that people do to one another, that peoples and states do to one another. We remain, as it were, open to and in the presence of all these things. And so we rightly grieve in these official days of mourning grieving the death of the Duke of Edinburgh and praying for those who will feel his loss, loss so deeply, Her Majesty the Queen, the members of the royal family, the royal household, all those with whom the Duke has had to do. And we do, don't simply sweep that away with the knowledge of the resurrection. We recognise the effects of sadness and grief and mourning and death in these days and we take them seriously as we remember all those who grieve and suffer in these days those for whom this period is a time of remembrance of deaths that have taken place in previous years those who are suffering and ill now our hope does not simply remove all this with the snap of the fingers. But our hope 
is the basis on which we continue to live, continue to serve, continue to believe. We long for the day when we will rejoice together in the banquet of the kingdom of God. We long for the day when the, the hope of the world to come, not just prefigured here, is made fully real, fully visible. And in these days, we look for the ways in which that kingdom, that hope, breaks into our lives now. The fact that we can look death in the face and grieve because we have loved, yet know that this is an ending and not the end. That through death, there is the life of the world to come. That through death, there is living face to face in the glory of the kingdom which is to come. So it's right that we mourn. Right that we grieve the effects of death and sin in the world. But right that in this Easter tide we wear white, not black. And in taking all the sins and pains and griefs and deaths in the world, Jesus Christ put them to death and opens the way to glory. We celebrate Christ raised from the dead. We pray for those who mourn. We look for the healing which God brings. And we pray that we may offer that gift and that hope of life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's Church, <clears throat> militant here in earth. In our prayers for Hampstead Parish Church, we pray for all who are involved in our work with children and young people. Among our local churches, praying for the parishes of Emmanuel and St Cuthbert's in West Hampstead. And in our supported charities, the work of Psalm. In the Anglican Communion, praying for the province of the Indian Ocean. And in the Porvo Communion of Northern European Churches, the Diocese of Aalborg in Denmark. In the Diocese of London, within our 2030 vision for being confident disciples, we pray for all who work in finance and for the Hackney Archdeaconry and the Archdeacon. In our prayers for those who are ill, we pray for Iris Terwilliger, Dayton Dewey, Ted Pleasance, Nicholas Gendel, Pam Bush, Steve, 
Robert Hatch, Michael and Mary Port, Ruth Harper, Father Stephen Tucker, and Chimi No Maria. We remember all who have died recently, especially among them Prince Philip, and among those who have died at this time. In previous years, we remember Daisy Dalmarajan, Joan Mance, and Chester Berryman. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord. And grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed, and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. 
Come unto me all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, for he is the very Paschal Lamb which was offered for us and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death and by his rising to life again hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Amen. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again, Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, Grant us thy peace. In receiving communion here in church, we receive the bread alone, um, and the way it is to come up the middle and then come back round by the organ uh, and back to your seats, please. And uh, to those who are with us online, we join together spiritually 
as God is present by the power of the Spirit, we remember in bread and wine the death and resurrection of Christ, joined together in communion with him. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us, preserve our bodies and souls unto everlasting life. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee, for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs, through hope, of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory, 
O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Reminder that worship continues today, uh, both here and online, at 11 o'clock. There's no 9.30 uh, bubble church, that's off during the school holidays. Uh, so at 11 o'clock for Holy Communion uh, here, that will be on Zoom uh, and on Facebook Live as well. And evening prayer tonight at 5 o'clock uh, on Zoom. Uh, all details of our worship services are in the emails that are sent on Wednesdays and Saturdays. If you want to join uh, that, then leave us a note on Facebook and we'll be able to uh, uh, get you uh, into that email as well. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always.